Hi, I'm Rob with the Aquaponics Source. We're here in Gold Beach, Oregon at a client's new 25 by 50 foot Flourish Farm aquaponics system. We came out here, we set up everything you see here uh, in less than a week with a great team of people. And I just want to take you guys on a little tour of the farm, show you what's going on here and what we set up. Um, the first thing you'll notice we have these 300 gallon fish tanks, two of them with windows installed. Uh, the client's planning on raising tilapia, so we're planning on uh, you know having adequate heating, water flow, and aeration systems to accommodate for those kinds of fish. Um, moving forward down the line here, um, the main heart of the system is our uh, Endurance 4000 automated feed filter. This is taking all of the waste from our tilapia here uh, and processing it through the speed filter. It's pulling out the solids and it's tr um, converting our ammonia into nitrates all in this one compact unit. I mean, you can see in the grand scheme of this whole farm, it takes up no space. So this is an awesome filter we really like to include with our systems that uh, makes the farm uh, operate more efficiently. Um, it is a dual sump tank design where our systems can operate coupled or decoupled. Right now we're operating in decoupled mode since we first started up. So this is a standalone aquaculture system and the plant hydroponic system is isolated by itself. When we have fish in here and the fish are ready for, to provide all our nutrients to our plants, we can turn a couple of valves here and it's one completely coupled aquaponic loop. Um, we also have a variety of monitoring and alerting systems. We have this pH, uh, TDS, and temperature sensor from HANA that is telling us all the parameters of our fish system and our plant system. Uh, we also have a Sensophone Sentinel monitoring system. This is a monitoring and alerting system that will actually send the clients alerts and notifications if anything happens. For example, your water temperature goes out of a preset range, uh, your air temperature gets too hot or too cold, we have flood detection in there, and then also power outage detection. All of that built in to this um, Sensophone monitoring system. Um, we also included an aerobic mineralization tank. This is where we take the sludge from the filter. So I can show you right here. This is where all the sludge drains out of the filter. You just put a bucket under here, you turn that ball valve, and about 10 seconds later, your maintenance for cleaning the fish tank system is done. You take that bucket of sludge and you dump it into this tank here. Now right now it's empty because we just started it up and we don't have any sludge yet, but we fill up this tank with fish waste and we vigorously aerate where we're growing bacteria that actually consume those solids, break it down even further, and in doing so, it also opens up additional nutrients into the water. Now periodically what we'll do is we'll shut the air off, we'll wait 12 to 24 hours, let all the solids settle to the bottom, and then we'll skim off that clean, clear water, and that will go into our plant sump tank, and that acts as a great nutrient boost for all of our plants. With our systems here, nothing is flushed down the drain. We don't dispose of any waste. All the water is recaptured. It's a truly zero waste system. Nothing is wasted. So, on to the plant side of things. This is our Groasis four-tier auto automated nursery and microgreen system. Now, this farm is definitely on the smaller side, and so they don't need all of this space for seed starting. I mean, this thing can do 16 10 by 20 trays at once, uh, which you know is around 3,000 seedlings. Now that's a little bit too much, but what the client's planning on doing is actually uh, growing microgreens in the extra space. So maybe one or two tiers are for nursery and then the rest are for micros, which are great uh, to sell to restaurants. Um, this system has uh, LED lighting on each level. The watering systems are fully automated and it turns on by a, a timer by itself. Uh, this can be um, coupled into the aquaponics system or it can be run hydroponic, depending on how you like to start your seedlings. Over here, the next step in the plant's journey is uh, our Groasis elevated transplanting trough. This is a two foot by 20 foot elevated DWC. Um, we also included a light rack and a lighting system using um, Thrive Infinity Lights going down the line here. Um, and so what we do is we take the seedlings out of our nursery and we put them into our lattice boards here. These lattice boards can pack a lot of plants, small plants, into a very dense area. And it's more efficient to uh, transplant the plants for a couple of weeks in here before moving them out to the main grow out. 
So that's how we transplant. Now, uh, let's talk about the grow out system here. This farm has two uh, four foot by 32 foot elevated deep water culture systems. Two identical systems side by side. And this is really nice. The client wanted to avoid bending over. You know, the bulk of your maintenance with a system like this is going to be working on your plants. It's transplanting, it's harvesting, it's scouting for pests, things like that. So what we do is we actually bring up the working surface right to your waist level. So the work you're doing is right here instead of on the ground. Also works great if you're in a wheelchair. These are fully ADA accessible and compliant. Um, so after they come out of the transplanting trough, we will plant them on the far end down there and we harvest from this end up here. And the way it works is as we harvest, the new plants slowly come further down. So it's like a big conveyor belt. All of these raft boards move by themselves. Um, as you, you push them down, the whole system moves. And as I said, we have two of them side by side. Now, in this greenhouse, we uh, were not able to mount grow lighting from the trusses. Um, so what we did is we built a light rack here, and this extends off of the frame of our deep water culture system. And then we hung our um, ARC 600 full spectrum LED lights and uh, light rail robotic movers from this light rail. Um, and now what they do, I mean, the, the motors are shut off right now, but when uh, the motors are running, they actually move fully down the length of this track back and forth. And they take this very high powered light, which by itself would just be too much for this one area. And they spread out our coverage. Now we're in a greenhouse. So we were able to do a longer track length just to provide the supplemental lighting that the plants need. Um, I would expect that these lights might be on for a few hours before sunrise and maybe a few hours after sunset. You know, again, these are supplemental lights. The other nice thing is that they have a very small footprint. And so you're not going to be shading the sun that is coming into your greenhouse. They don't create a big shadow. So very efficient lights to use. They're also on adjustable risers so we can bring them up and down. Now let's take a look at the media beds over here. This is the last thing that we'll talk about. Now, the client wants to mostly grow leafy greens, and that's where the bulk of our production is, in those deep water culture beds. However, they still wanted to play around with some varieties of tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers. And so what we installed are seven of our Aquabundance media beds. Um, each bed has its own flow control system, um, and you can uh, vary the water height in the trough. So right now, we have the water height about two inches above, uh, below the top of the media. But let's say you have larger, longer term crops and their roots reach all the way to the bottom. We can actually drop that water height to just a few inches um, just to decrease you know, what is actually in the bed. Again, we have uh, our ARC 600 lights, this time a little bit higher up, and on a uh, light rail moving system. Uh, the last thing I'll touch on down here is our heater. We are using uh, our AquaHeat propane fired uh, heating system. And um, this is hooked up down here. And uh, basically it works like a instant hot water heater where um, we have a closed loop of water running through a PEX line that goes to a heat exchanger in our fish sump tank. Uh, when it gets too cold, it sends a signal to our heater that fires on a pump t uh, starts turning to circulate that water in our closed loop. And just like that, we have warm water in our fish tank. If we're also operating de uh, coupled, we're operating as one complete system, this will also heat the water in our plant system as well. Um, very powerful heater. For a system like this, it wouldn't make sense to use electricity. It's just so much more expensive. Propane is the way to go, much more efficient system. Um, well. That kind of wraps it up here. I'm happy you guys could join me and take a look at what we built here, our new uh, Flourish Farm in Gold Beach, Oregon. Um, if you have any questions about this system or want to reach out about a system of your own, hit me up. Uh, my email is rob at theaquaponicsource.com or visit our website, theaquaponicsource.com. Thank you.